access valid access rights. It's so hard for independents, uh, even libertarians, uh, to get valid access rights, and it's extremely difficult to do a recall, for example. So, you know, there's this argument about the Republican form of government that we ought to just vote them out, but what do you do when you have a senator that's sitting in there six years? The recall process actually gives us the ability to kick them out in two years. And there's a little gray area there. It's not attempted much. There may be some constitutional discrepancies where a lawsuit would come up if a recall was going for, like, for McCain, for example, where I'm in Arizona. Because it's never used for that. Even though it's defined to be able to kick out any representative, the reason why it's never used, the ballot access restrictions are so severe. We need 30% of the voters in the state to sign a recall to get on the ballot. I woke up to this, and actually, it wasn't a wake up. I mean, I think I was born awake, and I never just got sucked into the media and propaganda enough to really jeopardize my future. I think that's the truth for a lot of us. I don't think a lot of us just woke up. I think we inherently understood our nature of our rights and our potential to make change and have communication and have agreement with others. But what the Democratic and Republican Party have done with their polarization, and even what Greens and Libertarians do, is they create a system where you're relying on their party to put someone in power to represent you, but then you don't even have a communication method with them. There's no integration. They're not using the internet in a way that they send you back a fake email, you write a letter. It goes into a pile. They don't even listen to it. There's no representation under the representative government we're supposed to have. So the republic that was theoretically created is not representative at all. And I thought it was really funny when I realized, when I learned what a recall is, if the Democrats are really so against the Republicans, or if the Republicans are so <coughs> against the re Democrats, why are these parties that have a good 30, 40% of the state's voters not filing recalls against the other party's members? And certainly, more importantly, we should ask, when their policy goes through, we have policies passed every year that we're creating more regulations on people, for example. Why are conservatives not putting forward referenda so that the voters can vote down those policies. And my theory is that because as soon as one party were to do that to the other, the other party would do it back. And the reality is that the majority of people don't really like any of the politicians. They don't really like many of their laws and we would vote all of them down and we kick them all out. So they don't want to empower you with these states' rights. When people talk about states' rights, it's a great group, 10th Amendment Center. I've actually used a lot of their model legislation to draft some legislation myself for my home state. Um, Groups like that, um, noble people that I, uh, I advocate for, I actually did a lot of campaigning from Ron Paul. Um, they talk about states' rights, but they don't open you up to the idea that we have more rights than just having a statist representing us. We have initiatives, which, like the Bill of Rights, can actually be used to restrict the power of the government, and should be. We have referenda, we have recalls, we have nomination, which I think you know, we're gonna have, someone's gonna get elected. If you just don't vote, the, someone's gonna get elected, even if it's only four votes. I mean, it's just, that's how that system works. So, I don't think not voting is an answer. I, unfortunately, I mean, I think a lot of us may be in the room, we've been voting for, like, maybe the lesser of evils, because we just, maybe we didn't want Hillary Clinton in, and we voted for Trump, even though we don't like him either, just because we're like, this is, a, this is a tough situation. What do we do to fix that? Well, we need to grab from the grassroots, have a way to get campaigns on the ballot for the candidates, like the Kokesh campaign. Uh, more rather, actually people like you and you and you and you could get on the ballot. And you don't actually have to have your own ideology to win a popular vote. My theory is that rather than have an ideology, you should be, if you're gonna run for office and be a representative, someone who represents the people. And what better way to do that than to have a more open forum and quorum, actually, a way to have policy debate with your constituents. That has not happened either. It's a concept called maybe a direct democracy candidate. The word democracy throws in a lot of uh, concern for people because it can tend to be a majority rule. But what I'd like to see democracy redefined as is meaning uh, really where the majority of facts lie on a particular issue. Where is the majority of consensus lying on the validity of those facts, not whether something is arbitrarily popular or not. So is in order to re yeah, I'm sorry. Is your is your overall goal to achieve more liberty and more freedom for everybody? Yes. Okay. Do you think you're going to be able to do that with government? Well, form? government as defined by the, the leaders, the governors, the state legislators, the politicians, no. 
I think we can achieve that with a new way of understanding governments where it's co-created by ourselves, where we have consensus on what policy we want. Why on earth would we have these great libertarians talking about all these great policies we have, we need to have for free markets, when we have all these ballot initiative states where they can put policy on the ballot, they've done some work in California to restrict property taxes, they've attempted amazing things. Where's North Dakota? Right there. North Dakota has so much potential, in fact, more than any other state, and I'll tell you a little history lesson about North Dakota real quick. All these states have rights. that legalized weed? Yeah. they are Colorado. It's not an argument for voting for anyone who's against the state. And I've had many anarchists humbly concede, and it's a beautiful time for us all to shake hands and realize, yeah, actually, you know, it's funny, but that method of voting, if it's getting rid of state power, it actually objectively accomplishes the goal we want. So, I mean, if, the, if yeah, sorry, next sorry. year, 2018, we want to have cross-board protected <laughs> cryptocurrencies, which I'm a huge fan of. I wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for Bitcoin, because I got it at the right time. Now I've got some money saved up. I'm going to be paying myself to build out this project for at least the next six months, maybe longer, without even having to do any fundraising. And regardless if I've done fundraising or not, I actually have a business plan I'm going to talk to you about that I myself as an entrepreneur, and entrepreneurs all over the country, thousands of us, tens of thousands, can get started right now to create a program for every state cool. where we create a permanent directory of our, our supporters for liberty. That is it's actually such a small amount of people will make you laugh. We have a small minority of liberty-minded activists in each state taking even just a weekly, a weekly stroll through their mall or supermarket, you know what petitions like, get one page of signatures a week and we can do massive change. Look, in Arizona we need 250 people, we have millions. And we could flood the ballot with actually referenda on every bad law they pass. We could also put recalls eventually when we get that critical mass. So I'm going to scroll down and show you that tons of initiatives and a blog here about North Dakota. The very beginning of the progressive era was not liberal or conservative. It was started by the nonpartisan league. This little blog I wrote, North Dakota nullified the Fed. Has anyone uh, heard Bill Still? You had seen? You had heard of the movie The Secret of Oz? Great film. He's mm -hmm. the one who did Money Masters about Money the Federal Reserve. The Secret of Oz talks about what happened in North Dakota, and what happened was. This agrarian revolt happened. All these farmers were very angry about the Federal Reserve, about to bring railroads to put them out of business. And they formed the Nonpartisan League because they realized that, hey, food is nonpartisan. And this effect it's going to have on our economy is nonpartisan. And we need to stand up to this. So, what did they do in a time when they had horsebacks, buggies, and you know, no phones, no cars? They were able to get such a huge percentage of their population spread out throughout the state to sign petitions in a time when they didn't have ballot access rights, to put pressure on their representatives to put it on the ballot as their own citizen referendum. Referenda has uh, actually a couple definitions. I'll, I'll explain all that in a minute. But. So the politicians put a referendum for the voters to vote to approve the first rights to ballot initiative and referenda. That way, in the future, if there's ever a policy that people don't want, they could form a legitimate fourth system of checks and balances to counteract issues with the courts, with the legislature, you name it. And that's really what we should have where we have power, we shouldn't have to wait for politicians. And what they did in that time when really they didn't have the technological, technological app application we have now, which is huge, like recognize they did this then, what we can do now with technology, they nullified the Fed. They created what uh, opponents call the socialist banking system. Um, it doesn't allow for the fiat banks to participate in fractional reserve lending. So whether you want to argue it's socialist or not, it's owned by the actual people of the state. If anything, it's like, if, you, if you're part of a, is a business socialist, if it's co-owned by investors, no. It's just, it's co-owned by the people of the state. And instead of paying back debt to the Fed, they basically did like a Brexit vote back in the early 1900s and said, no, we're not going to borrow from the Federal Reserve anymore. And actually, during the time of the whole economic collapse, they did not have to uh, be involved. And uh, their, their economy was actually not shifted by that. Yes, they were on the the bill for the inflation for their dollars, but their state's debt didn't increase. And that's very valid. You want to know about that. Okay? I archived the information on this blog, so when you get a chance later, you can see it. I, I, I go to, there's a main site for data related to the whole ballot proposition process. It's called Ballotpedia. And um, I did that research. I found it was on there. Um, Bill Still did a movie, a whole movie about how this is a great solution about the Federal Reserve. And if all these states did this, it would kind of make the Federal Reserve not have debt lending you know, power like they do now.
It wouldn't work across the board, though, because mind you, this is only 24 states in the country where we have statewide ballot access rights as of now. However, that can change, and it will just simply take the efforts of those people in those states to want to have ballot access rights, and they're going to want to do that when they see success in states like North Dakota. Let me go back to North Dakota. I'm going to tell you why North Dakota is one of the best states in the country to talk about for this. Because North Dakota has all five ballot access rights that exist. And there's this vector of five. I'm going to talk to you about, interestingly enough, the number five, how it relates to volunteers' properties that we can participate in our, our time, how it relates to five vectors of corruption that every single problem in government can be associated with, and five ballot access strategies. So citizen grand jury is something that no one talks about. And the people that are talking about it, I'm sorry, but really they don't talk about this type of legal citizen grand jury in the state. There's a lot of these kind of pretend grand juries where they have like mock trials where they have people bring up evidence, but there's no jurisdiction. They're not actually getting convicted. A real citizen grand jury gives people checks and balances over the court system. And when you have corrupt governors, and I really believe in the right to protect water, and I think that we are an oil-based economy when we should have hemp anyway, and for them to jeopardize the whole Mississippi with a pipeline over it, like what Standing Rock was doing, I think it's great what they did. I don't think it was a solution. The interesting thing is, with all the people that were standing at Standing Rock, if instead of standing they were getting signatures, it would have taken them 10 days. Just 10 days. The smallest amount of signature requirements for any ballot proposition is actually with either nominations, because sometimes candidates are really low, and otherwise a citizen grand jury. It could have been that simple. It's like 2% of the voters. So if they get, if you have, Let's say 5,000 people. And you don't have to be a North Dakota state resident to get signatures in that state. So all those people that flood from around the country. But it wouldn't need to be state. If you had to be the a signers state, have to be a state. Yeah, they just yeah. would have to do a travel run. I've contacted all of them. I, you know, trust me, right. I, 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 yeah, I bet attempted. You. Um, but look, what they did is they did violate some treaties. And why not have a citizen grand jury? Because they violated the treaties that the state uh, had with those natives for their protection of their land and water. I mean, the state has an obligation, it says, to protect the health and well-being of the citizens right in there. And water is yeah. ideal for health, right? Um, why not have a citizen grand jury for the sheriffs that were water-bombing people and, uh, you know, the, the governor who allowed for this uh, when initially they said it was fine? The same thing happened in Oakland during Occupy. I, lived, I was living in Oakland at the time. It was like Jean Kwan was saying, you all can all camp. And the next minute she's like, pop, 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 get the guards out there, shoot them with rubber bullets. And... You know, the black block anarchists are out there saying, yeah, let's riot, let's fuck the police. That accomplished about 50, I think it was $50 million, if I'm not mistaken. 55. 55 million? Yeah, for the Oakland PD that then increased their budget. That's why I'm not for protest, I'm not for waiting for politicians either. This is actually a civil solution. It's volunteers, if you want to volunteer and get signatures. The argument could be, well, what if the policy is really bad and it takes away people's rights? Well. I'm not going to, as an organization CEO, support anything that violates the non-aggression principle. And I am happy to show you, I've archived legislation for well over a dozen types of policy that limit the state's government, just like the Bill of Rights, that we should put on the ballots. Yes? Uh, just a quick question. Is this the same blockchain technology that Dubai is planning on going in 2020 uh, for their uh, political realm, for their voting rights? No, I wasn't aware of that. Man rights or any kind of so, <laughs> <I'm not laughs> Yeah, at the end, uh, I'll That's explain right. the different sure. blockchains and how this would apply. And uh, definitely some that are in production right now that can help us accomplish goals. Um, and are you promoting a blockchain? I am. I'm promo I, I am promoting an ICO with uh, we I have that, partners with Fintech question Portfolio. Question. So yes. um, where do you see the low-hanging fruit to go get a scalp? So like Joe, he got a scout, and he you know, was able to help legalize weed, and I think that was like powerful. Where do you see the low-hanging fruit where we can go into a state and for not a lot of money, get a scout? Oh, great question. Uh, Massachusetts is actually a really important state to talk about because out of all the big, and actually I'm gonna answer that question in this discussion. I have a bit of a format that I should follow because it's psychologically, you wanna know the problems, the solutions, and strategies, and any canvasser who's done door-to-door -door or anything, you got to learn how to get these kind of pitches. And you, this will make it really clear for you. I wanted to explain to you that um, part of my philosophy comes from my uh, work in uh, understanding the philosophy of these uh, Taoists and Chinese medicine. In India, they have a five-element theory. I really have found that these five elements correlate very well. well. Listen to this. 
the five vectors of problems that any government puts on us are broken down into these five categories. You all know the first one is monetary. They have fiat currencies that dominate us. They want to put us in debt. They want to control us and uh, make us tax slaves. That is one, and the volunteer solution is, of course, cryptocurrencies, precious metals, anything that they can't tax, right? Another one is the, um, oh, militarism, excessive militarism. And, you know, what's a volunteerist method to break down people's want to be part of the military or want to be a police officer that's just an order follower violating people's rights? I mean, if people it's never apply for stuff. It is a cult. Is it artificial? How do we do that? We gotta we gotta help snap people out. We're gonna need a combination of great independent media, but I feel it really boils down to a redefinition of what socialism is. Forget socialism of government. Just socializing with people. Let us have more conversations with people about these issues one on one and make an interpersonal connection with them. Because the only volunteer solution I can figure for that, and it does make sense, it ties in a spiritual component, if you will, but the non-aggression principle. Um, from, a, from yoga systems, which I study as well, it could be known as satana dharma, it's that everyone's allowed to just go on your own path, just don't harm anyone else. Okay? And interestingly enough, the Bhagavad Gita, which I highly recommend you read if you want to know some deep spiritual insight from the most ancient writings of the world, actually says that God is on the side of those who have had their property stolen from them. Because we are against theft. And the whole story of the Bhagavad Gita is about the generous king's kingdom being stolen from his greedy brothers in Krishna, with God being on his side and protecting him, and he didn't even fight and kill everyone, he let his, his uh, partner Arjuna do that, but it was a story about theft, the great theft, and God's on your side if you have theft taken from you, and, and actually the philosophy of non-aggression is the volunteer's way, socializing with people and preaching to people about whether it's religion or just morality, having a strong ethic that's not kind of volatile based on just like, you know, daily whims or arbitrary feelings. Let's have stable ethic that we should not aggress against others and spread that message virally. Because when enough people get that, eventually, yeah, the police will break down. They'll stop writing tickets even if they pull you over. The, the people in the military realize, eh, maybe they should be an entrepreneur instead of trying to get just a grant and go sign and shoot people so they can go to school. I mean, come on. But volunteerism to money is cryptos. Volunteerism to stop the wars is ethics. Volunteerism, this, this is a big one, eugenics, environmental eugenics. What's poisoning us, causing sickness in our health, actually making us feel ill? And the solution to that was down to another volunteer's love, which is gardening. Let's not rely on government subsidies for factory farms, for the uh, ag big agra. Let's have garden communities. Let's share with these liberals out there who really want to grow nice pumpkins and eat your squash too and start having a conversation with them through the kitchen table. Having potlucks, having community based on that. And to fix all the problems with the health, if we just go back to the natural medicines the plants provide for us and the fruits, we will be healthy and we can, we can voluntarily really push off the illnesses that the overlords are, are creating for us with geoengineering, GMOs, fluoride, the you know, list goes on. I mean, chemicals in every food. But how do we change the system? By appealing to the overlords. I'm getting, I'm getting back to it. We're not going to appeal to them. We're going to piss them off. Well, I've tried for years and it never works. They actually kind of like it when we uh, do ballot initiatives. In fact, in Michigan, we've had marijuana on the ballot four times now. And we've lost, we've had 49% of the vote. Is this really what Doesn't democracy like is? It. No, I don't like it. No, and there's well, limitations. You see borders on this map or not? Right. Do I, see borders? I don't see borders on that map. So you do. These are all considered sovereignties. They're all considered sovereign states, but they don't act like it. And well, that's what because we need to do is start that. smaller, man. We can't start with the states. You know how many signatures I've gathered, how many people we've got on the ballot in my state? It all for nothing. It's all just a beauty pageant. Every time you take the Candace Miller event, they say the same speeches. No one can do anything. Uh, in so we did it just my little town. All right, what did you do? We just went around. I only needed 3,000 signatures. Right. Right. So my town legalized cannabis. First town. Like, so you, okay, you did it with your own state town. Balloted, just balloted just your town alone. Like 64 counties. Okay. And then the state became the first state. But you had to start in a town first. Right. And get your foot in the door. And then you could bring it. You're exactly. like, this worked here. Okay, let's replicate it now. We found what works. Yeah, I, I'm so, an elected official. And another like, thing that I learned is sign up for jury duty. Like, call yeah, up. Yeah. I want to be done jury duty. I call up once a week. 
I went well when I were in town. I call, I literally call him. I'm back in town. You guys sent me a letter for jury duty. I wasn't make, able to make it last time. Can I come to jury duty this time and get on the jury and then say not guilty? Yep. <laughs> That's how you nullify the bad laws. Is you go there and be like, so, well, yeah, there's, there's, there's no right. victims. It's not guilty. Yeah. Uh, no, dude, one is involving <laughs> judicial corruption, and the other one is the corporate media. The, to, to solve corporate media again, socialize the people, talk them one on one. But we have to become journalists. The ability to write, the ability to just present and articulate your thoughts, to talk to people, is something you should practice because it's a human trait that we have animals don't have. It allows us to archive our history and our knowledge for future generations. It's very important. I think every single one of us should get into blogging. Start now, not just holding that information and you know learning it and just having some discussions with people. Get it out there. And I have a plan with a, journalistis, a, a journalistic project to help journalists and to create a way for all of us to even um, tie into, tap into other monetization platforms for independent media. And what we need really is like a new um, hub for the alternative media that people want to go to that it's specifically about not just journalism, but constructive journalism, where reports given to you that talk about all the world's ills actually have solutions and strategies embedded into one. Because that is really, it's like a, it's a simple aspect of our psychology that the journalism industry has neglected. And if only journalism was preaching solutions and strategies, our society might get somewhere. The mainstream news is not doing that. And unfortunately, the alternative media is not doing that either, really. So I want to have people kind of shift your paradigm, OK? Don't wait for other media groups. It's great to follow all these guys, support them, share their stuff, but also do it yourself, too. Because then we start to be like holograms, start to repeat information all over the web. People start to see different people repeating messages of freedom and liberty. It starts to get more popular. They investigate, learn about the Federal Reserve, 9-11, which is why Massachusetts is so important, and other crucial issues. The judicial issue, the volunteer staff material, it is up for a little debate. You know, it's not, it's not statism. Statism is relying for a politician. But to defeat the corruption and judges and the judicial system and all these corrupt laws, we can vote on the policy ourselves. And if it's policy that is limiting the state's power, why are we neglecting this double-edged sword that's often used against us and swinging it back at the politicians? Why are we not flooding the ballot? It takes so little effort if a small group of people actually do it, if they make it a lifestyle, where once a week you go out there and get signatures, a small group of us can achieve massive results. Let's do the math. Um, you live in North Dakota. It takes, uh, what is it, about 250,000 signers to get in on the ballot there? Or maybe 15, it's a little less. 15,000. 15? Yeah. No, 15,000, that's it? For, for no, nobody in North Dakota. <coughs> oh, it's a small state. Uh, 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 and you have about, a, you, you have about what? It's well, about a year? I know right? a guy who did uh, shared parenting had measure single-handedly. He did 15,500 signatures. Huge. Wow, that's yeah. huge. Yeah. So, well, if someone can do it single-handedly, imagine what 10, 20, 30 of us can do. And why stop at just one piece of legislation? Why not carry multiple? In the industry that I worked in, I found, ironically, it was actually easier to get more signers the more petitions I carried. Because if someone wasn't interested in one, I'd immediately pitch the next one and it'd perk up their interest. And then, now that I had their attention, I could explain the other one more and you can get them to sign a whole slew of them. So if we can tie in multiple ideas and multiple angles to get some progressive-minded people, some libertarian-minded people to come to the same board but sign all the petitions, it's going to make it easier to get any of our initiatives on the ballot, especially, again, if they all abide by this non-aggression principle that RIPAC is going to stand behind. Yes. Have you put up a ballot initiative, and instead of getting signatures, have you just ever tried to just go right to the Capitol and talk to the representatives and see if any of them will introduce the... <laughs> to do so you. would still put us in the same situation. Well, you can't right. can't, people, can't, yes, I or I know where a hundred reps that. that you could just yeah. like go well, from okay, one office so next to the next. You, and all you need to do is find well, one. It's even easier. easier. You go on their donation list and you find out who their top donor is and you go to their door. Yeah. And That's then the you, have sure, way. You, you, you get it into circulation. You get how many times have really great bills been in our state that never got any work because the governor governor didn't vote it or didn't pass the Senate? It, it's or like, why it. wait for politicians when, yes, it seems like a lot of effort to get 15,000 signatures, but only because we look at 15,000 as a big number. Right. If you divide that by 400 people, 500 people, or even just 20, 30 people, and you see that, look, we have like a whole year to get these signatures, all of a sudden you can do the math in my state, we only need 250 people to get one page of signatures a week. And I filed five initiatives in the state. 
One of them is to protect cryptocurrency indefinitely as a constitutional amendment to ensure under the 10th Amendment the federal government will not be able to tax it or precious metals. And I say we should preemptively do that now because even if Trump, some people might want to be optimistic that he won't attack it, what about the next president? What about the one after that? And in regards to what president is office, we don't have to wait four years and just hope that we're going to have a big change. We can rapidly change our state's rights now and nullify every unconstitutional federal action. We can create our own policies. We can reduce the power of the state. And we can actually just vote no on referendum. And I would like to find an anarchist who really wants to argue with anyone for a long time, why it would be so valuable to not vote on a referendum that's going to stop abuse of power of the state. I know it's voting, but if they're like, you don't want fluoride in the water, too bad. You're on a public sewage, you're on a public piping system, and you have fluoride, but if all of a sudden there's a bill on the ballot to get it out, I mean, do you know how fluoride is really just disrupting the ability for people to consciously... You know most people don't know that? Yeah. That's the problem. That's because they're on fluoride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously. In mainstream media. Yeah, obviously. But, but so there's these five trying hundreds, to convince it's, anyone to do it's anything the is very mainstream difficult. media. We defeat that with alternative journalism. Yeah. The judicial system, we defeat that with our ballot referendum and initiatives. The, uh, the chemicals in our environment, in our health, and what's harming actual ecology, toxic environmentalism, not environmentalism for CO2, I don't know about that, but look, there's 600,000 peer-reviewed studies on how toxins are killing you. Why do we have cancer? One out of two people. That's not natural. We need to have gardening revolution and all participate in that, share our vegetables, use that as a social way to then have yeah. that talk yeah. about volunteers with yeah. our liberal friends that we want That's to bring into the fold the non-aggression principle. We gotta pre uh, preach the non-aggression principle, whether it's through any means, um, really uh, agnostic or, you know, non I, I just like, like how non-aggression principle isn't religious at all, but it does describe what we want. But if you're a religious person, use that to advantage in your religious community as well. And, um, and then, yeah, we got to invest in cryptos. And I have a whole slew of them that I'm going to talk to you about real briefly. So you can just take the notes down, um, take a look at them, and see if you also see value in them for the activism community in the future, too. Um, the five vectors are defeated by five volunteer solutions. And then there's these five, I want to call them volunteers. And it, it can be slightly debatable, but you do have to volunteer to get signatures, and people have to volunteer to vote for it. And as long as they're not aggressing people, not creating state power, could we please like create a gray area where initiatives could be considered volunteers? Because I promise you, if you look at the history of it, there's facts, 100 years of history. Initiatives do change law. They can be used to restrict the state. North Dakota nullified the Federal Reserve. If we did that in half the country, that'd be a lot less debt for all of us. And we're not using that power. No, we're right. not. So, so we're not in order to invest this needs to be created. There's a couple yeah. nonprofits that talk about this, but because of nonprofits, they'll lose their status if they get you involved. So I saw that as a big need. I kept looking for people. I was contacting people I'd hope would be the leaders for this that have said nice things about direct democracy but never actually followed through with any plan to make it happen. No one's doing anything, so I did this. And what this has in it is, you know, pretty lengthy philosophy, stuff about the super PAC that would give us rights to do this in every state, but I actually see another way. We could just have a PAC in every state and file two, which is great. It's more decentralization, right? More PACs. Um, here's the five areas. You can review what I've written there. There's the solutions, more information about those. This is supposed to be where you can get in, get into a forum, and then we can have our own little quorum debate. But I'm actually going to use Steam it now. Instead, use the third party. They offer monetization. It's all good. In fact, everything on the site is going on Steam it. And a new crypto that came out just called Internet X is looking at an alternative opportunity to decentralize websites. Instead of having to wait for a whole decentralized web to make sure information is secure on there, if you as an individual just have a decentralized website, you know, like, with what I'm doing, it's not going to get hacked. It's not going to have its data disappear. I was building this initially on Wix platform because I didn't know anything about programming. I didn't know anything. I had all my blogs hacked out of it. I got really pissed. And when I heard about Steam, it, I was like, permanent archive and history? Absolutely. We need that for activists. And uh, right here on the side column, let's slide down. Uh, there is actually a whole, I'm going to go to the home page. There's a whole slew of model legislation. I haven't seen any activist people doing this either. I mean, there's a couple groups. There's actually a liberal group that does it with a bunch of federal bills, which I think is horrible. These are, all the legislation on the side here is model legislation, scroll down, 
Can we start? I have every state yeah, archive with all the data. Let's pick a state. Let's go actually. Arizona. Who really wants to Never mind. Louisiana. Do we have Arizona people? Yeah, I'll talk right. to you afterwards. What other states do we have represented here? Colorado. California. California. And which one? Wyoming. Wyoming. Actually, I only check out Wyoming real quick. But I know this stuff. But they don't this. like Bitcoin. Yeah. So you could take the model legislation I have on this site. I can, with the information here, you can find a, the exact link to file a pack. The information's right there. What I'd want to do for each state is eventually make it really streamlined, really efficient, really easy to understand. I've only really started working on Arizona because I can do so much of my time. But Wyoming's definitely coming. Because Wyoming in, uh, as well is a big one. Wyoming activism shows us that we have various rights. We have initiative statutes, we have a referendum, the nomination, of course, and local recall, so you can at least control your local government. When you learn about the CAFR funds and all these funding that's supposed to be used for community development that the local politicians are squandering for pet projects in Arizona and Tucson, they have this thing called the big balloon factory debacle. They give millions of dollars for balloon factories, like friends of the politicians. All this money is being squandered, and they want to make up for it, give us traffic light cameras. But you know what? We kick those traffic cameras out. How? Yeah, right. Ballot initiative. Really? But that was ballot initiative. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. there's a town, yeah. I, I want to say Kansas, I could be wrong, but Florida, they, they made, they got Florida out of the water with an initiative. They banned GMOs in areas in Northern California from being grown. They've, I mean, there's so much history, rich history of ballot initiatives being used to reduce the power of the state and their cronyism. The initiative requirements are 15% of the signatures. Um, eventually, I'm going to figure out, okay, what's the population? How many signatures are there that we need? What's the timeline? But there, these are the three main groups I, I linked to Ballotpedia that has really an archive of all the history of the ballot industry, or the ballot process for about 100 years. Um, Citizens in Charge is a nonprofit. Great guy, Paul Jacob. He's actually got a fund and will invest in libertarian initiatives. I've talked to him. He just wants to see that if I build this out, if you help me build this, he's got this thing called the Liberty Fund. And he's got money, and we could do something for Massachusetts. Massachusetts is profound because as a small signature ratio, there are victims from the 9 11 attack. And Mike Gravel drafted legislation to call for a new 9-11 investigation. And it's legal, and upon doing so, it would call for a form of citizen grand jury with a citizen panel. I played a role in that campaign, just a quick story, because I learned about it. Mike Gravel was the guy competing against Obama the first term, who was saying, no, we don't need any of that. What we need is national initiative. And I don't agree with him on that. I actually wanted to talk to him about states initiatives. Why create something new for the national when you're supposed to have states rights? It's supposed to be local. But anyway, he had some great ways to articulate how direct democracy can actually be used to provide consent of the governed and reduce corruption in government. And he created legislation to call for a new investigation. It's still viable. We could refile this any year. There's not a very high signature requirement. And you want to talk about, you know, how to disrupt politics, let's have a new investigation. They don't need a lot of signatures. Uh, we probably need... Again, probably, it's probably around 200 people, 250 people that go out once a week in that state, too. And just once a week, a lifestyle. If you're an entrepreneur, you'd find what I had done uh, when I had gotten to like, little kind of like gimmicky ideas for sales. I just pass out cards to people, too. If you have your own business, I found a great way to actually meet my community, talk to them about real issues, and give them a card. Like, you know, look, uh, here, here's something. It could be someone's telling, selling T-shirts, or you have a friend who runs a pub, and you want to promote his pub and have you know, Liberty Party down there or whatever. You can actually use the initiative process to piggyback your own opportunities. And you can go to stores and talk to people, and it's all legal until they ask you to leave. And uh, it's a great way to meet your community, satisfy the services for the people you're providing, which is to empower us all, and, you know, empower yourself. Recall the Rogues is another great group. They were built off of uh, Judgepedia uh, founders. And it's like a Wikipedia on uh, judicial related issues. And they have a project, Recall the Rogues, about how we should recall all these politicians too. And uh, I think they're pretty up to date. Citizens in charge are really good. But what's really most exciting to me is that this model legislation is on the site now. And Anyone can take it. It's very easy to look at your state statutes. If it's a constitutional amendment, it's almost verbatim. You could just literally practically take the same bill that's archived here and create a pack, file it in your state, start to build up your movement with us. And just go down. I have all these different categories. Tenth Amendment strengthening bills, Second Amendment protection, cannabis legalization. See, I have the one from California. I have hemp 
national model legislation. I filed that in Arizona, $20,000 fees for any federal agent. Anyone who is hired by any federal agent or state agent who digs up or burns a hemp crop or inf infiltrates you know, a hemp grower. And you know, you want to talk about protecting our rights, let's turn the tables and use the, uh, the uh, aggressors and the order followers to regulate the politicians instead of us, regulate those bureaucrats and regulate those people who would, you know, be hired by Monsanto to dig up some hemp crops. Um, drones, Let's make sure drones are restricted. Don't have these drones spying us. Look, this is the legislation right here. You can copy, you can file it in your state. Fracking, I feel you can't have an economy if you don't have water. So I don't think it's aggression to say you don't want a fracking company to drill your water, because it's actually a form of cellular aggression on your cells if you're drinking water that's causing cancer and <clears throat> killing you. That's so, I mean, can we have that discussion? Because there could be some moderate regulation that you don't want. I mean, maybe government can only serve that purpose that these companies that are involved in non-green technologies that create pollution, as we are learning how harmful it is, and we see cancer rates increasing, where everyone's kid, their grandfather, their parents are getting cancer, it could happen, it's gonna happen in our lives, Let's start banning all these really disastrous chemicals that are causing sickness, because you can't have an economy, you can't have any freedom if you're all dying of cancer and GMOs, poisons, all right? You can't have anything if you don't have water. This is pretty radical, e-democracy legislation. It says, instead of even doing balance the way we've been doing it, have kind of like a blockchain encrypted uh, system for people to vote, um, and actually and don't you think maybe voting you know, is, not have. Don't you think voting is is illegitimate. When it's voting for a candidate, yes. Unless that candidate is a true anarchist who's gonna dismantle the state power, yes. Right, right. So, but, I mean, it just seems like all, like I, um, I look at government as a technique that organized crime kind of took off the shelf right. and used to kind of, you know, enslave and then molt, oh, yeah. you know, the population of the continent. And it seems like instead of all of these, like, you know, single issues, if we just expose that government is organized crime, it's a tool used by organized crime, it's illegitimate. Yeah, right. If you're easy. using the techniques of religions and cults to produce these taxpayers and order followers, like, if, if we can get enough, like, you know, 10% of the population, and, and not just any 10%, it's gotta be the intelligentsia, because the intelligentsia drags the rest of society. If just all of their edicts become unenforceable, you know, we just have to get, we just have to expose the game, the con, to enough right. people. Now, the there's, there's, a, there's a, a, uh, uh, a Hindu axiom that says philosophy does not cook rice. And you can have the best intentions, the best ideals, but it's going to take sometimes direct action to achieve what we want. We need a segue. I love the idea. We need knowledge. We need to express the importance of understanding that government is violence. But we need to have a segue to reduce the amount of violence government can inflict. And what I would like to see is have the police officers work for us instead of the government and start regulating, throwing politicians in jail, throwing bankers who invest in you know, corrupt pyramid schemes with fiat, throw, give them some fines. Because look, they're ripping you off. I mean, you, if you are going to get locked up in a jail cell and you are paying taxes, I would love to see it when we're not. We yeah, could so do that when the crypto bill is passed. Up, I'm out gathering signatures. You see, that's my conundrum at this point. Excuse me? If, well, my friends are being locked up by the police. I'm not gathering signatures doing essentially nothing. And you could free them. Well, you, but you could. It's, uh, it could be left. Look it's at the system, not. though. Just look at the system. You really think that how many years are you going to commit your life to gathering signatures? It doesn't take years. It would take, in fact, we could reach a then critical mass with it? one program. Because, no, because I'm here now. We're here today. We're doing this now. Um, I, I, I love that, that other action. You, action that says up, you cannot tell you someone that something that cannot be done without actually bottom. already doing it. Yeah. And why you say, why isn't it be done? Because there's a culted information that has been kept secret from you. You don't hear about citizen grand jury and recalls. You don't hear politicians saying, let's do referendums. So what, and what you have to do is build an yeah. army. Yeah. You, you build an army. You do this with tech. Yeah. And the best way to build an army is network marketing, MLM. So that's the best way to Plus tell you, tell you, tell you, tell you, tell you. <laughs> yeah. I have 300,000 people. I come out with a product tomorrow, and 300,000 people buy it from me the next day. It's the greatest way to organize people. Now, imagine creating something called, I don't know, the militia. When was the last time anybody had the militia? Whatever you wanted to call it. Yeah. And then, you know, you organize people. I like the, the, the militia idea. We had the idea in Mexico the other day. America. <laughs> and just hear me out for a second. What 
we have a right to bear arms in the militia, blah, blah, blah. So I go online, how do I join the militia? I can't find any website that tells me how to join the militia. <laughs> Well, right, and, and, and I don't know where the hell I would join the militia because no one has put up a website and has organized the militia. Okay, oh, but we have a right for it, but no one's organized it. Just like we could do this, but no one's organized it. So You're I was already thinking, in the militia. I was thinking already. <laughs> you yeah, right. If, if I know we're all in the militia, but how do we organize? Right. So right. my thought was, organizations um, overrated. You you sign up for the militia. It's a thousand bucks. You get a gun, and then you put people on the automatic order yes. of ammo. Right. <laughs> ammo. Hundred bucks a month. It's a consumable product. Now you have to tell, you, you refer three of your ammo's free, right? One, oh, two, yeah. three. And then you refer stop three. Ammo yeah, every, no, no, every, every Friday you go out with your friends, you shoot the ammo. Oh, you sure. go to the gun clubs, you yeah. sign up all the gun clubs, they sign up all their members, and all oh, of a sudden yeah. you've now yeah, organized, right there, man. Really you've now right. organized a militia with hundreds of thousands of people. They're on an automatic order, a hundred bucks a month. Uh, on bullets and stuff, yeah, right? They're buying information products too, right? So, so, the, next, so the, next, the next step is you've now built this Second Amendment happy libertarian Ron Paul revolution type organization, three tell, three tell, three tell, maybe, maybe once a month you do a thing at Front Sight out in Vegas, who needs a good excuse to go to Vegas right. and blow stuff up? It's gonna be fun, you have these, these trips. And now you bring a, a petition thing to the network. Okay, you've got a way to pay yeah. people a full-time income exactly. to promote then their name, they have a consumer project, issues. now you can say, oh, this is an issue that we want our organization in this state, oh, we already have 50,000 members in this state, and you press a button, and all of a sudden that, that, that network in Colorado or whatever state it is has their marching orders. Yeah. Okay, so, so you need to organize and use technology like this, because then you can snap your fingers and the next day it's done. Yep. Hey, we can reach a critical mass where you could print out a petition from a Twitter post so that Twitter could get censored to one of these other groups, uh, Library or Steam. But the reason it hasn't happened is because no one's figured out a way to pay people to do it. People have to make money. There has people to be have to go change tires for money, sell real estate, whatever it is, they have to go do stuff to make money. So no one's figured out how to pay yeah, someone a full time hair. income to focus on libertarian projects. I pull my hair out trying to convince people to but join But it's all me. voluntary, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. People oh, oh, like I can volunteer that oh, or so go and watch Game of Thrones. Oh, exactly. Dude, don't, don't tell me vacation. again about the Federal Reserve. Right? That's yeah. how we get. But if you can figure out a way we talked in an echo chamber complaining about problems yeah. where we're just waiting to hope we get an anarchist elected. Like or just I'm just going to create the militia. I'd like, you know, I'm on volunteerism. <laughs> Would you guys sign up for my pyramid? Point, if you, okay, you just <laughs> okay, if you just don't <laughs> participate, <laughs> if you just let the government do it as you you be free for yourself, but you just let them do what they do, they're going to eventually come at you. I mean, that's so we have to block that when this process gets But the thing is, but if it reaches that point, legal legal means aren't going to block it. They're just going to come in. There's a hundred years of history that argues exactly the opposite. Exactly. And you cannot, you guys are talking about creating curiosity in the minds of people to capture their attention, and you can't can't have curiosity if people don't even have a basic understanding. You just you're arguing against yourselves. People, you just said people don't know. They don't know. It's not that they don't care. It's a basic. It's it's innate. They don't know. It's that's not true. It's not that they don't care. We need discussion. We need discussion. We need debate because of the the time constraint. I'm going to just clean this up. Now, now you understand the five, uh, how have you volunteer areas, the five vectors of government corruption. You can really see they all correlate. And these five other opportunities that, you know, you could just ignore them. I don't think that you want to, though. I think you see potential in it. And really, uh, a small conservative effort. I mean, we would be, it would be anarchy to the state. And I actually think I coined this term, I call it anarcho democracy. Anarchy means no rulers, democracy means we. Rule independently. You want consensus? Let's form it. What do we need? We need a quorum, an initiative quorum. I call it IQ, and a branch off the steam at blockchain. I have uh, the, the president of FinTech, Amal Carr, said, Yes, yeah, so let's disrupt politics. He loves this idea. We need to create something to monetize, uh, help journalists have a place where they can create their journalistic content. It can be organized in a way that is more sophisticated than just being a place where you search by topic. Actually, make it where all the journalist pieces that correlate with one issue are designed around each other and blogged about and, and linked into each other in a way that we create an e-learning system for the, the, the end users just coming to visit what's going on. And we turn it to a video, an interactive project, where they get to read blogs, they get to watch video, and they get to learn about a topic in depth. And 
have proportional views of different people's perspectives based on the news that they've dug up. Let everyone independently compete for their monetization, but create a platform that you don't just get from Steam that could be built off its blockchain. But why we need a specific debate for policy? Because when that's built, it's going to be a glorious day when all the arguments about free markets, for example, are brought into this quorum. And all the people who are really for um, just fraudulent fiat systems get to then finally see the archived data and the evidence in one central location. And we get to then have a process. Everyone can have a say in peer reviewing and reviewing if some of that data is wrong or if there are conflicts of interest. Let that all be heard and let our democracy be defined not on what's arbitrary, arbitrarily popular, but based on which team or which proportional representation of a policy idea has the most weight of content, the most urgent and the cleanest content without conflicts of interest. And we form a consensus, uh, I call, I'll call it a, um, an official intelligence as opposed to artificial intelligence. Don't we already Most have that? I mean, don't I mean the internet? I mean, anyone who wants to take the time to research and to see what's going on, the information is already. We all need there. something streamlined for the one average person. One spot would be nice. Difficult. Well, yeah, to but you get yeah. an want an app. e-learning system for liberty yeah. that has all the journalists yeah. and, yeah. and even letting you know that's the people that are considering themselves progressive that's things that's that came to because we need to see that their arguments are defeated in some cases. There's some things that I'll agree with some liberals on. There's some things I'm more definitely more conservative on. And I don't, I don't have a strict ideology, though. I'm here willing to learn from all of you. And I may be wrong about some of these things, but let us at least have a debate quorum. Because until that's created, you have everybody in their own camp creating their own echo chamber, and none of it is finding that middle ground consensus everyone agrees on. Because, but we want that, because once we find that, that's where our initiative power lies, that's where our referendum power lies, that's where our populism power lies giving us more power than even our governors. So we don't have to wait for them. I'd like to live my life without ever thinking that there was a governor, not ever thinking that there was this structure. I prefer to live hyper-local and to have my own town and to have my own people and to put all of our focus there. I'm so tired of the system where all of our focus has to be on the top. So the sovereignties, we, the sovereignties give us the most leverage in the well, yeah. state yeah, yeah. because only really the state technically, point. Technically, objectively, can nullify the federal government. The county cannot, the city cannot, but if we create the cannot, not yet. Okay. But if, there, there's some leniency, but, I mean, I'm curious, like, so you legalize it in the city, but it's not, it wasn't legal in the state yet, and. Well, you have it legal in states, well, but federally it's not, so you still have a it's, battle. I know, and but a lot of it's not, not, to, the, not to the Constitution. Because no where's battle. the one governor of any legal state that's saying, no, this is legal, we have a Tenth Amendment. I mean, it's very clear to me. And when we study the Constitution, should see that. Yeah, anything that hasn't been uh, decided by the government is left up to the states and the people, respectively. It's time to assemble the militia. That's right. Well, look, we can solve problems without guns if the militia members. Well, we'll guns of knowledge. Guns of knowledge. I'm in Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. Suits. We need if uniforms. We need all in suits. If we yeah, if they weren't there, I, I actually envisioned uh, it could be. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. it doesn't matter who you are or how you're dressed. But if you were carrying a gun and you have that right in Arizona, you can just walk around with an AK on your shoulder. And if you were holding a petition board too at your local supermarket and you were talking about freedom, people would respect the hell out of you and they would sign that petition. <laughs> yeah, but, but check this out. If you already have your, your pyramid built with all the militia people, you could send out just, the, the petition I, I like that idea because I don't care who gets it done. Have signatures, man. Uh, yeah, whether yeah, it's militia people or people or militia or a combination of both. Is, be if we can start right flooding the ballot, and we can, we only need a very yeah. small yeah. critical no, mass to do the, the laborous work. But then we can take it further. We can have a critical mass online where there's no labor either. And we then break down our government structure where it is no longer in any way having any power to totally limit us to their right, to their, to their ability. Do you see an electronic uh, petition happening where you can sign electronically without a signature, without paper? I mean, petitions are um, not legal. I don't want to do that because getting someone's signature is like their... It is like the definition of their soul's design. It is, it is actually like your vibration. It looks kind of like a vibratory wave. And there's, there's a more interpersonal connection, I think, when it's paper and it's pen. And I mean, there's something about that that I, I would like to. Like, 
efficiency. Yeah, and keep as a legacy yeah. system. Well, we could, could use optical to scan to technology. Just just the other yeah. Yeah. There's a there is a state that says they accept electronic So yeah, that's the thing. That's a good idea. They don't. They don't. It's not that they don't accept them, but they will file a lawsuit against them, and they actually probably won't even recognize. But optical scan technology connected with a smart contract, I guess some people don't like that word, but you know what a smart contract is. Mm -hmm. yeah. We could then validate the signatures petitions like that and eliminate about a third of the costs. Another major cost to these campaigns that keep it really restrictive for grassroots groups is the contractor fees. We can eliminate that too. Have it go from you, the person who has a referendum that you're concerned about, directly to the paid petitioner. Because if you cannot get out there and volunteer all your time, or let's just say we have 30 initiatives actually, and it takes a lot more effort. So we need a streamlined system to get those on the so ballot. This, this gets to my point. Like, if you have individual initiatives where we can take a scalp and we can roll back a law or we can do that, then, then yeah, you can go and have paid petitioners, which is a lot easier than trying to talk a thousand people and spending a couple hours a week you know, gathering it. That's how it should start, though, authentically, I think. But um, I, I, I think, do you care? Do you care or do you want to get it done quick? Because if we you want to get it done speed. quick, then, then for, for, for the places where we can take a scalp at relatively low cost, then let's do it the quick way right. with the paid petition. So what I've, so there's, uh, there's a trinity of uh, yeah. uh, yeah. blockchain yeah. projects that harmonize. Like the rest of the bullets. The initiative the bullets. The initiative <laughs> the <laughs> is free. Well, as I, I think you're going to like this. this to, to answer your question, the initiative quorum deals with the media problem. The petitioning problem is repealed with what I call united petitioners. Uh, all the petitioners in the industry want to have a union, but they can't because it's total free market and they're independent contractors. No such thing would ever happen. But what they hate is the corruption in the industry, and they hate being ripped off. It's like construction contracting. There's a lot of fraudsters getting in there just to steal people's money. They have them do all the labor, and then they rip them off. Smart contract, go directly from you, the individual who wants to see the recall on the ballot or the referenda, directly to the petitioner you're hiring. And what we need is the initiative quorum to find that pool where we finally realize, yeah, we have enough financial support from our pool to get that on the ballot in our timeline. And United Petitioners would be a company in a total free market where there's billions of dollars spent every election, and it would actually take over until there's a monopoly law placed against it. And it's kind of funny because it would actually accomplish a lot of things. It would allow for very inexpensive campaigns so real grassroots efforts can get easily on the ballot. It would stop the industry's corruption for the laborers who painstakingly get out there in the hot sun and in the cold winter. Um, interesting, like, like the state doesn't want you doing it, right? So in Arizona, the time they have it is in the summer. In Alaska, it's in the winter, like the worst time no one wants to stand outside. Um, now it would be a lot easier. They can get those signatures. They're not going to get ripped off. We can have more campaigns on the ballot, meaning more options for voters to dismantle the state power. Is there something like that happening now? Uh, my company, FinTech Portfolios, loves the idea, and I'm finding the partners that want to build this with me now. Awesome. That's what Nexus is doing. The third one that ties this all together is really just more about making cryptos mainstream. Um, and now, how many people here are business owners? Do you have a retail shop too, by any chance, or just online businesses? Online. Okay, well, that's great too. What we all want to see is retail businesses, the mom, pop, brick and mortars using crypto. I came from an industry before I got into the ballot initiative work. I, I did uh, cam canvassing, it's always, and then I, I did door-to-door -door canvassing, and then I got into a student credit card marketing thing they had going on. Um, I also learned about direct business marketing and merchant services. I did a uh, thing with Royal Bank of Scotland where they wanted to recruit me and they taught me everything about how their swiper sales contract worked, like where I could work for them and sign people for swipers. And through my uh, talks with so many businesses in, in Florida and in Oakland, I have a bunch of businesses that love the idea of being part of crypto. The one thing that they don't like, what's keeping it, is volatility. And I don't know if anyone was in the room next door with a fellow from Overstock, but he was saying, yeah, we need, at least as a segue to get people into crypto, a tethered coin system, another one that segue then into gold back system, they should have right on the same wallet to switch to gold to, yeah. and then, then they can get into the volatile markets and we can start really building that. Um, but GoCoin is just an idea, it's a governance organization, uh, and what it's to represent is to create that volunteer Go solution that we want, a, governance already, organization. Gold, so GoCoin is done, it's already built. It's, well, it's, it's a Go merchant coin? acquisition program. Well, okay, well, yeah, they're one of the largest, they're one of the largest. Okay. They're bigger than they're paying Coinbase. Really? Okay. Well, maybe. Up. 
what I want to do, and I, I could apply my skills, because I did talk to businesses about that. I, I have uh, people in Oakland that want to be on board. Uh, well, you know, my friend Steve is the CEO of the Oakland. You can talk to him about being a rep and signing up businesses and stuff awesome. to become merchants. Yeah, because what the industry needs, needs is they need uh, a, a training local. system for the entrepreneurs to know what it takes to really get into that market, to find out when the, I mean, it's like you're kind of hunting them down. you gotta, not, you got to get there early in the morning. Sometimes you have to stay out real late at night because when it deals with restaurants, there's always these busy times of the day where no manager or business owner is going to talk to you. There's a real like hunt to that. So just field, and you have to be events. ready for it, that needs to be trained for it. All the big events, every single parade, every festival, every single thing, you yeah. can get a hundred signatures easily in that Well, to go get merchants, no, but, but so I'll you, tell you, you the difference between what... It is talk to the actual merchant acquisition guy that already has a thousand merchants and already signed you know, up, the, and have the crypto be plugged okay, in. Okay, the reason why this ties in is not because it's about making uh, Bitcoin so mainstream as much as it is, that what we want to have is a solution for, let's say, the hypothetical, when we do have a total volunteer society, how do we then garner funds for the projects we want. What we want is a coin that's really efficient. I'm thinking EOS platform or something with no fees. And we build into it a voluntary fee that you pay to your charitable cause, your volunteer's cause. It could even be like the road that you guys are building. And you get to select it from your phone app where you want the charitable cause to go. So when you make that transaction, the business who's on Visa Swipers now just simply is replacing that fee that was going to the big banks to your charitable cause. And that's what I want to do. It's like a philanthropic project. It would allow all charities and causes to participate. It'd be totally organically growing. And there's some genius marketing ideas here. It's called cause marketing. Big corporations are getting into it. And when you're in a checkout line and they say, hey, would you like to donate an extra dollar to do this? That's nice. That's one angle. But another angle that cause marketing can do is it can create a free marketing system for every business. Because when now a charitable group has a fundraising system where they can receive a residual portion, just like that entrepreneur who signed up the business owner, and they can receive these fundraising donations flooding in from, let's say, a, a real ecosystem of hundreds of businesses in, in cities. Well, what's going to happen is you create a free fundraising system for the charitable groups, and if they're active, if they're out there talking to people about what they're doing, they can hand out, get this, a QR code like smart contract coupon. Get the person to go into that business, say here, it's got the coupon, they scan it, they get a little Dash coin, or it could be GoCoin, it could be some, it could be a combination of maybe multiple cryptos. But a way to get cryptos into people hand, hands through a QR code coupon, and give them an option to sign up where they could store a portion of it, so that they can immediately get into the crypto universe just by saving a little money in a business. And why a business would do that is because now they don't have to pay marketing costs so they can give a person a discount at the register instead. Because so all the charities, if you have 10, 20, 30 different charitable groups, they all will create a real, it's actually like a free marketing opportunity for any business. So I want to create a project that will allow us to voluntarily fundraise for the projects we want, which could fundraise for United Petitioners, it could fundraise for the journalists, for Initiative Corp, because I want to see also yeah, more of a hub for all the journalists to get together. And these three organizations together, I think, really synergize to create a solution for all the government problems, from journalism, from ballot access to deal with the corrupt judges and laws, to getting cryptos into the mainstream. So, uh, yeah, that's about my, my discussion. Um, I think that, uh, like, you know, yin and yang, opposites attract, like, maybe be open-minded, paradigm shifts are necessary at all times. In every part of our life, we're going to learn a little bit more. Maybe there's a time for maybe a gray area semi-statism. Not statism, because I don't really want to advocate for candidates, but we don't have to wait for them. And uh, if you all were to Long join horizon. and participate, and we started just real small, any major movement happens like this, and guess what? In 2018, we actually potentially could have flooded ballots all throughout the country, and it's kind of like game over for these politicians they realize they're up against something they didn't prepare for. If anyone will go out to vote. You see, the millennials don't even care to vote anymore. The system yeah. is just... Well, strange. if you give them something to vote for, if it's a policy that they want... They have to advertise. I don't even want to vote. I just want to organize and get all of our friends. I don't want any voting. That's right. If it's voting for something that they the ballot guide teaches them, it's a free educational resource, and they now get a chance to learn about your perspective. 
And through that process, now there's actually at least an opportunity to create change. But otherwise, there is nothing we're doing except for either acquiescing and letting the tyranny happen and just try to make our crypto money, or, you know, again, waiting for the perfect president or politician. And I don't believe in status. This is not a status project. Uh, the, only, the nomination process can be objectively used, however. If we do have the right candidates, and I would like to advocate for, or uh, call it a representative candidate. I actually did file this political party. I don't know the potential of moving forward for party, but think of this idea of actually having a representative party. If a party is supposed to do anything, if a politician is supposed to do anything, supposed to represent it. So why not but on a local level? And he's still running for that politician.